As always, my grandpa and I read the comments on those posts together, and he absolutely loves hearing what you all have to say. Loves your theories. Uh, very much appreciates your well wishes, but he, he rebuffs the claims that he is exceptionally brave um, and worthy of commendation. He says, um, eh, I just do what the job requires. The brave ones are the ones who are more affected by the impossible ones. Those guys and gals who are still around today, even though the cases took a, a part of them. Bigger part than they ever took from me. They're the ones who should be getting the praise. The partners. Partners I've had over the years who were never the same after the ones of those cases that hit our desks. Tell them I appreciate it, but they would all do the same things I did in those situations. For whatever reason, I was just lucky enough to not be in the direct line of fire when a case like, like those took one of us down with them. Just luck. That's all. All right, I uh, got one for you. In my whole career, I... Uh, I only ever dealt with one serial killer, you know, um, you know, not that we were hoping there'd be a serial killer on the loose. I mean, of course not. It's just, you know, those are the cases that make careers. This is about two years before I was planning to retire. So it was what, 99, 2000, uh, somewhere around there. If I can, like a bag of serial killer would be the cherry on top of my whole career. I should have known right from the jump it was going to be an impossible case, but well, I don't know. I hope, um, I hope in the benefit of hindsight, I suppose. In the department, just amongst ourselves, we called this sick son of a bitch the backwards man. Mm. Hey now, we never claimed to be creative types, we just called him that because he, well, we caught him on camera a few times, a bunch of times actually. He'd approach his victims, but, he, but he'd walk up to him, backwards. He'd walk with his, he'd stand with his back to him. And he talked to him. And he always wore the same thing, a long black coat, big hood pulled up to his head. Winter, summer, didn't matter. Always wore the same thing, always walked backwards. Now, if you're walking down the street, you see someone walking backwards toward you, what are you going to do? You're going to get out of the way for that weird son of a bitch, right? No, mm -mm. no, this guy. You walk up to these people, they'd stop, they'd talk to him. Talk to the back of his head. After they'd talk for a bit, like 20 or 30 seconds, he'd take off the, in the opposite direction and they'd follow him. We tried following him on the cameras. This is where it gets real weird. Downtown, you know, they have all, all kinds of cameras on the street. There was one, middle of the day, he took someone. Got the footage of six different cameras. He walked up to this guy, got to talk to the back of his head for a minute, and they started walking. Now, now you're thinking if he walks up to him backwards, he starts going in the other direction without turning around. He's just walking normally, right? When all the cameras, his back was to it. Cameras facing east on uh, Geneva, his back was to it. Cameras facing west on Geneva, his back was to it. Walking backwards. Cameras facing north on Water Street, his back is to the camera. Sounds like it doesn't make sense, right? You know, if he's walking east on Geneva and you're looking at him from the south, you'd be looking at him in a profile, right? No, sir. His back was to the camera. He's walking sideways, crossing his feet, one over the other. It didn't make a shred of sense. All the cameras had the same time stamps. We we're watching this guy walk in distinctly different gates at the same time. Now, once they had turned enough corners, they'd just disappear. Now, we'd check all the nearby buildings. There'd never be any evidence of them having been there. We would eventually find the victims, but okay, well, I'll get to that. Anyway, uh, because of the whole camera thing, we obviously never saw his face, not once. We chased this guy for two years, interviewed, uh, I mean, hundreds of folks who were in the, the area, the son of a bitch would have taken his victims, all said the same thing. I only saw his back. His back was always to me. I thought he was some weird guy walking backwards down the street. No one was talking. No one ever saw his face. Except for one lady. We'd sent some unis out canvassing for the backwards man. He'd taken a 13-year-old girl with him in, in the third ward. They'd gone door to door through a few apartment buildings. And um, there was one lady. She was she was in her 40s. Her name was um, Catherine something. Uh, 
doesn't matter. So about a week after this girl had gone missing, uh, we go to meet this woman, this Catherine, and well, it's hard to describe, but it's like it's like she was ripping off the page of one magazine and pasting it onto another. Her apartment was immaculate. The third ward isn't a cheap place to live. You know that. She had big fancy bookcases, a big TV, pristine furniture. She was a lawyer. Does she mind the apartment and the pictures she happened to be in that uh, were around the house? She was a real professional type. But the woman herself, the woman herself, she'd seen better days. And those pictures, she was an attractive woman. She was dressed sharp. Hair was nice, big, sparkly white smile. We talked to her. She she looked like she hadn't showered in weeks. Her hair was all messed up. Her teeth were dirty. She was just she she was a mess. She was afraid. She sat in a chair in the corner and she watched the door while we talked. She was she was shaking like a leaf. We sat down to talk to her. You know, ask her what she'd seen. Her voice was all shaky. She whispered. She whispered like there was someone in the room and she didn't want to hear her, what she was saying. I'm paraphrasing here, but it was something like, um, like he, he walked backwards to the girl. And I watched him do it. He, uh, he walked up backwards to her and just stood there. Uh, wasn't too close to him. You know, she was, she was stuttering, so you could tell she was terrified. She goes, she goes, I could see the girl talking to the person. I was, I was walking back to my office and I... Walked a bit closer, and I walked by, and I threw my coffee in the trash beside them, and, and he was saying something over and over and over, the same thing, and she was talking to him like they were having a conversation. I asked her what he was saying, but she was just started hyperventilating, you know, freaking out. It takes us a good ten minutes to calm her down, but we need to know, you know, so we, we have to know what this guy was saying. She goes, he... He was saying, um, is a house really a home if you aren't there? And he'd, and he'd sniffle a bit, but like, like he was sick. Then, then is a house really a home if you aren't there? And another sniffle. Is a house really a home if you aren't there? And a sniffle. And then she starts crying real hard. I had to give her a minute, calm her down. She says, then I realized that it was a perfect copy every time, like it was on repeat on a recorder or something. Did something something to, to me to hear it. I thought I was going to drop dead right there. I didn't know what it was, but I thought I was going to die. That's what the girl was saying. She was, it was like she was hearing something different than I was. She was going on like, oh yeah, me too. I love it there. Oh yeah, what about you? That's great. Didn't make any sense. And I kind of got down close next to her, as uh, comforting as I could be, and I asked her again. Did she see his face? Her eyes well up with tears again. Her hands start shaking. I can tell she's about to break down again. She whispers, his face, his face, his face. And she starts shouting, his face, his face. We try to calm her down, but then she just stops. She goes dead silent for a second. Stares off into nothingness. It's like she's composed herself with a blink of an eye, and she goes, she goes, will you excuse me, I need to use the restroom. Before I could tell her to go, I asked her again if she could tell me what this guy's face looked like. She's just as cool as a cucumber now. She just says, you give me a moment, I'll collect myself, I'll be back with you. I'm very sorry, I just, I need to calm down for a second. I didn't really know what else to say. I mean, her change in demeanor was... I mean, it's jarring. It kind of left me and my partner stunned. We couldn't tell her no, you know. It was her house. She had every right to be up, and she had every right to get up and go, and she did. My partner and I just stood there. We talked for a minute, kind of get over what the lady had said. And when she's gone to the bathroom, she closed the door. We'd walked over nearby just to keep an ear on her. She seemed unstable, but not, not to the point we thought that she would harm herself. As I'm telling you this, I realized what, what that must sound like. Like, the woman was on the edge. She let go. And then she went to the bathroom, but I mean, she was um, she was afraid. Okay, it was just it just seemed like shock. And in this line of work, you have to be able to read people. We were reading her. Neither of us felt she was at risk. Now the water had been running. We hear a creak. You know, like she sat down on top of the toilet or leaned against the counter, or something like something like that. But that was it. 
No crying. Didn't sound like she was moving around at all. I knocked on the door. Didn't get a response. Knocked again. Then hurry. She didn't answer. I tried to open the door, but she locked it. That's why I busted the handle. Now she'd taken the blades out of one of those single-use razors. Two blades. I know what you're thinking. She tried to slash her wrists, right? Wrong. She cut out her tongue. There was blood everywhere. It was all over the sink, the floor, the mirror, on top of the toilet. The tongue itself, it was sitting on the counter next to the sink, right next to the cup that her toothbrush was in. Catherine. She, uh, I think her name was Catherine. Well, that's going to drive me crazy, but... She, uh, she was sitting on the, the edge of the bathtub, totally silent, still as calm as she had been when she'd gotten up to go in there. Every few seconds, she'd spit out a mouthful of blood into the tub. It was, it was horrifying. My partner called for medical. I did what I could to, to help plug up the bleeding, which, I mean, wasn't much. But on the shower wall, she'd written in her own blood the words, his face, which uh, I don't know what that was supposed to mean. But still today, I don't know what that meant wasn't an indicator of what it had looked like or anything, just, just, I don't know, I don't know. But she, um, she ended up in the hospital, of course. She, she remanded to a psych facility for a few days. I remember my partner at the time, he looked, looked her up a few years after I was out, and she had, she was living with her sister, and by that time she'd been arrested uh, twice, I think, for heroin possession. And her life really fell apart after that. And that, that's... Uh... So anyway, um... So that was odd enough. The whole thing with the guy walking backwards, whatever his face looked like. Um, the weird thing that he was saying, um... But that wasn't it. See, see, he'd taken these people, we'd follow them on the cameras, and we could, um... You know, as much as we could. But eventually we'd lose him. Sometimes the victims, they'd be missing for days, sometimes weeks. The longest any of them was missing was a guy about uh, about your age. He was, he was missing for about six weeks. But they'd always turn up. They'd always turn up in the same way. They'd, there'd be a call placed to 911, and the call would always essentially sound the same. No. We just got home. There's a dead body in our house. So there, uh, there were these... There were seven... Seven of these murders, you know, um, that we know about. Three had already happened by the time I got put on the case. The lead before me hit his 20 and uh, left the force, so I dealt with four of those. Girl from the third ward, she'd been missing for, um, what was it, uh, two days, shy of a month, towards the end of August. She showed up like, like all the others did. Always in surrounding areas, never anywhere near where they'd go missing. This poor couple, uh, um, the wife had come home from work about two minutes before her husband, and she'd walked in the house. She found this 13-year-old girl's body propped up in a reclining chair in the living room. The girl's body... Um, well, she's been, she'd been frozen, and when the unis got there about ten minutes after the call was made, she was still ice cold to the touch, like she'd just been dropped there right before the wife had gotten in. It just barely started thawing. Her skin was black. Like She had the, the worst kind of frostbite you know, every inch of her body. There, there was dried blood coming from her nose, her ears, her eyes. You could barely see it. It was there. And she'd been, um, she'd been posed. One leg over the other. She had one hand held up. Son of a bitch put an empty champagne glass in it. The worst part. The worst part was her face. This this was a pretty girl. And she had or at least she had been. But um her face was solid black, but she was uh oh, shit. She was smiling. Lips curled up, toasting. Like she was celebrating something. It was well, that was the worst part about it. I mean, to me at least. The other ones were there. They were different, but equally as twisted. See, one of the 
One of them was the guy I mentioned earlier on um, Geneva. He was, he was found at a house in Brookfield, burnt to a crisp, still smoldering too, like he'd just been put there the second before the people got home. He was posed too. He was in their recline. He was in their rec room. He'd been set up like he was tossing a dart, the dartboard. Yeah. Then one day they just stopped. Never happened again. The only thing related to the backwards man that happened after that last murder was... Oh, okay, well, I, sh I shouldn't say the only thing. I don't want to diminish it. It was, it was very unfortunate what happened. I should say that the last thing related to the, the backwards man that I dealt with, and uh, as far as I know, the last thing to happen with him in, in our city was... Um, is this poor girl. Uh, she was in her early mid-20s. Going to graduate school, she had um, she just had a baby maybe six months before, and she'd been walking from the local college campus to the parking garage, somewhere between those two. Then she'd shown up. Whole thing was caught on security cameras. Again, no matter the angle, his back was always to the camera. Well, they talked for a minute, and this time, um, well, he turned he turned around to face her. Couldn't see it because you know whatever the hell happens with the camera. And, they talk for just a second after that, but instead of her following him, he just left. He just walked away. And she stood there about ten minutes, still as a statue, just looking into the distance, kind of a, a thousand-yard stare. And she eventually went back to her car. She stopped at the store. She picked up diapers, started cooking dinner for her husband and her son. And while they were having dinner from cooking, she sat down at the kitchen table wrote something down on a piece of paper. She folded it over once, set it down at the end of the table next to the couch. And she goes in the closet and she hangs herself on one of the bars. Husband had been playing with her son, hadn't noticed her, put that piece of paper down. The smoke alarm goes off. I've been looking for her. He found her in the closet. And the note, not just... The note just says his face. As many times as she could fit on the paper. My grandpa was drained after this one. I mean, even reading the transcription is one thing. But when I sat down with him and he, he tells me these verbally for me to record and transcribe, it's apparent how all these cases affect him emotionally. Keep in mind, these are just the impossible ones because, I mean, besides those, he still has nearly three decades of Normal, explainable cases weighing on him. My grandpa then said something despite his clear exhaustion from the memory of this one, and even after my my insistence that he, under no obligation, needed to share any more of this with me, if he didn't want to, he said, um, he said, let's make that call, get you on the line with my pal in Arizona. Now he's got a story or two that'll really kick your ass. Hey there kids, and happy holidays, it's me, Mr. Creepypasta, and I just wanted to tell you guys thank you for watching tonight's video. If you enjoy watching videos here on YouTube, then you should check out the Mr. Creepypasta Storytime Podcast, which is available on Spotify, and on iTunes, and on Google Play, and everywhere like that. If you enjoy listening to Mr. Creepypasta Storytime Podcast, you'll enjoy watching it on YouTube, because it's the same show. You guys are both hearing the exact same thing at the exact same time. Also, thank you guys for supporting me on Patreon or on Popbase. You guys who are the top supporters on Patreon, especially, thank you so much. Like Joey Gilbert, Jordan Alexander Sanchez, Wayne Milstead, Chaminsky, Ken Lando Higuchi, Brianna Ventine Jensen, Stephen Van Huss, Tristan Pelton, G Weevil 3, Diana Kraus, Asia, The Red Oak Shield Virus, Sandy Barney, Nico Kyle, Caleb Dougal, Daniel Paulson, Dante Rao, Last Blade Song, The Ginger Bros, Don Muehmeister, Eliminator 86, Nubsky, Finley E. Hopkins, Steampunk Center, Rafael Rodriguez, Optimistic Avocado, and Dr. Strawberry. Everyone there, as well as in the description down below. Thank you guys so much. If you'd like to also follow me on Popbase, where you can get a couple of different updates here and there and play games along with me, then you can do so on your phone. It's on Android and on Apple. And if you guys are looking for something like a hot beverage, such as, say, a tea for the cold winter months, then my wife is still selling teas over at etsy.com slash shop slash ivory monocle tea, including a Mr. Creepypasta tea that has me on it 
dabbing. Don't actually, actually, if you do order that tea, request that sticker because we made it, but she didn't want me to put it on the, on the tea because she said it wasn't professional. I think it's the, whatever. Check back throughout the entirety of the holiday season for more horror stories every single day. Forever. Sweet dreams, kids. <laughs>